Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to have Felthos versus Rymark on Iceland. This is the last match for today, by the way, so this will be it. But yeah, it's... It is going to be Felthos and Rymark. Felthos... Well, okay, let's go over Iceland. Let's go over the map as I normally do. I'm losing track of things. There were some technical issues with the water when I loaded the map, and now I'm getting all flustered. Yeah. Anyway, so this map, you start out in the northeast or southwest. This is the only start spot. This is a very inflexible map for start spots. Typically, players will then go for the hill over the northeast or south, far southwest. And oftentimes, what you'll see is you'll have one worker go up to the northwest or southeast, another worker on that giant hill, and then another worker kind of going around the back, and then the commander will go forward. So it's a very flanky map. You often see units going around trying to deal with all of the expansions, and then from there you'll end up seeing usually a mid either a midway consolidation along this area, like this line here, or one player will start to take an advantage and it never will really consolidate. One of the two happens. Anyway, we have the game starting, and Rymark going for their favorite, the Jump Jet Factory, while Felthos goes for the Shieldbot Factory. Starting out with a few, well, they dirt back for scouting, and that's it. Relying on the size of the map to prevent any early attacks from coming in. While two pyros coming in from Felthos, or sorry, from Rymark, they're going to be very aggressive. Yeah, I gotta remember, if it's a jump bot unit, it's Rymark. It's always Rymark. Rymark loves jump bots. Huh. Anyway. Something about trees killing FPS. Yeah, it's not great. Not terrible. They're nice trees, though. Well, okay, they're nice trees from the top. <laughs> The nice trees in the angle you're probably going to be playing the game at. Anyway, now both players know what the other is playing. Yeah, very nice trees, though. I didn't even notice Felthouse said that. But yeah, this is going to be a bit of a problem. So, from here, now that they know something's coming in, Felthouse is going to need to deal with it. And I think five bandits should do the trick, and I think they have enough time to produce that. No, actually, they have enough time to produce three. Just barely. The third will come in right as the pyro arrives at the base. And the pyro going up, and Felthus, I think they have radar. I don't think that was a hard... No, that was radar. That was not a hard read. It would have been a good read, though. I mean, that's where you would go. There's no reason not to. That's a hard-to-defend area. That's often where the player will expand first. And it also provides a nice flanking position, because you can, you can go from there, down this ramp, and then you can go around here, the side, behind everything else, then it's just great. But... Yeah, Feldhaus didn't... quite have to worry about that as much as they might thought they had. The Lotus beats the Pyro, and Rymark is kind of stuck with this Pyro in the back, it can't do much. Basically, a scouting run. Took out a Metal Extractor, that's about it. No real harm done. Actually, is this gonna die? Well, two metal extractors, actually. And this convict is still looking like it's under threat. But this pyro's... Yeah, it's kind of locked up against the wall. It's not going to heal itself, I don't think. And the pyro... And the convict survives! So it worked. Sort of. The defense worked, I mean. Ramark, however, didn't lose... They lost a bit. I mean, that's... That's 400 metal right there. They just lost. Yeah. Donated a good couple hundred metal or so. Actually, no, donated less than that. That's that's 88 each. So yeah, 176 metal was just donated by Rymark to Felthos. So Felthos will probably appreciate that and will likely use that pretty soon. At this point, though, Felthos does need the energy, but now that they have pretty much secured this area with the Lotus here to prevent the jump again and another Lotus in the back to prevent anything from... not that anything can really come around the back, I think you might be able to jump along this, like two or three jumps to get from here over here in the back. I think. I'm not certain, but I think. I'm fairly certain that the jump range is high enough. Yeah, that's... That looks like it could work, actually. I think you could do it. I don't think that'll happen, but if it does, the Lotus is in the way. So, Rymark is not going to be able to get in pretty much any easy way. Well, okay, with two Pyros, they'll be fine. But not with one Pyro. With one Pyro, they have a bit of a problem. And Felthos going for a counterattack, which should be probably effective. How upgraded is this? Not upgraded at all. An unupgraded support comm. And the dirtbag will be taking... Well, okay, it's not going to take that much fire. It's not going to matter. 
For the bandits, however, there are enough bandits to kill that commander. And with the dirtbag... Actually, dirtbag's kind of getting in the way. Dirtbag's being more trouble than it's worth. That dirtbag, I think, actually saved Reimark's commander. If Failthos had moved that dirtbag away and have it stop hitting the commander, then... Okay, it didn't quite save it, but that was close to saving it. So Failthos just took out Reimark's commander. And Reimark in a position to try to harass. And there comes the pyro into harass. But the bandits are, are in position, and the pyro has no safe way out, with the lotus basically finishing it off. Taking out a bandit and a metal extractor, but losing another pyro. Rymark is losing a lot of units this game. They're getting a decent economy, though. They have been expanding while they've been losing everything. But still, that's a lot to lose. Setting up a puppy army as essentially the counterattack on top of that, but I don't know if that's going to work. If we were doing Cloaky versus Jump Bot, I'd say it'd be a good idea. Because that would get rid of the Glaives, no problem. The Bandits, on the other hand, I don't know if Bandits are one-shot by Puppies. I think they are. The Puppies deal like 400 damage a shot. Yeah, 410. So it still works. So that's still a good idea. Okay, never mind. Actually, given that Bandits have 250 health each, I'd say this is a better idea in the Jump Bot versus Shield matchup. That's a much better idea. Because this is more cost-effective. Although bandits might be more accurate, so it could be harder for the jump for the power the puppies, I should say, to actually hit. That's the one potential problem. But if the puppies manage to hit, then it's fine. And this pyro, once again, it's out in the back, but it could come in again. It could jump in if Rymark wanted to and attack the back. As long as they were careful about defense ranges. Okay, it looks like it looks like bandits are more accurate, and it looks like it makes no difference. Puppies are more cost effective in this matchup than they are in the jump bot cloaky matchup. That is really good to know. So at this point, neither player can really deal a whole lot of damage. Though Failthos, if they build up a decent army, especially if they... Oh, I can't... Have, I mean, thugs wouldn't really help much. Yeah, I guess bandits are really a good choice. So yeah, they just need to keep fighting. I mean, at this point, they do have an economic advantage. They, Their military disadvantage is pretty much entirely this jack. That's 600 metal. That's the only military difference. Actually, that's not entirely true. Felthos also has their commander. They still have their commander, which is more than can be said for Rymark. So Rymark has actually got a better military than it looks. Felthos's military is actually... Ooh, nice. Power coming in. This is what I was talking about. Power coming in, dealing a bit of damage, getting rid of a couple metal extractors, making sure Felthos cannot get away with their economy. Nicely done there. Good job, Rymark. I was waiting for that to happen. But yeah, with Failthos's commander, that's worth 1,400 metal. Failthos effectively only has 1,000 metal worth of mobile of army that's going to be used. Rymark essentially has twice the army value. That's always the tricky thing when a commander dies, is trying to evaluate the army. Because commanders count as offensive, which makes sense. They are offensive units. You can use them for that. But usually, it's this army that matters. Okay, so Rymark pointing out that puppies are better in an ambush. Not as good, I guess, against bandits than against glaives. So they're better against glaives in a straight-up fight, but they're worse against... But they're more cost-effective because bandits are more expensive if it's an ambush, because they'll kill the bandits. That's what I thought. The bandits are more accurate. And that's the biggest thing for puppies when... Puppy versus glaive. Glaives won't necessarily hit puppies. Bandits have a much faster weapon, and it's more accurate so, as a result. So they could probably kill off the puppies before they die. Now, the tough part about this is Felthos transitions. Felthos will have to transition at some point into... Like, Thug Law would kind of be countered by Pyro. Because Flames are still pretty powerful against Shields. They don't penetrate them as they used to, but they're still pretty powerful against them. And... Wow, how did that bandit get down here? That's a bot pathable area? No. Oh yeah, just barely. There's a tiny little ramp area that does work for bots. Unfortunately, this pyro just committed suicide. <laughs> it was done with life. It had seen it all. It wanted to end it. However, it was a poor choice because Failthos now can just build in this area with impunity. And it's not like another pyro is going to be able to come back here. It might be able to hop around the back here, maybe. But I doubt it. But at this point, Rymark is a little bit behind. Failthos continues to have a slightly better economy, continues to have a slightly better position, they're about to boost up their economy to just about a plus 10 advantage, and that's not including Reclaim, too. 
And Rymar continuing losing pyro after pyro after pyro, and an outlaw is what we're seeing as the switch, which I agree with. Outlaw Bandit works nicely against the pyros. And Felon on top of that, so are we going to see Felon... Felon Convict? I mean, the Felon on its own is going to be very risky, especially with Jacks and Sumos and Firewalkers and such. Well, not Firewalkers, but Jacks and Sumos. Firewalkers are more of a problem against the Bandits. But Jacks and Sumos, because they're so tough... I mean, 5,000 health for the Jacks, and I think 12,000 for the Sumo. Either that or 13,500. Either way, it's so big, the Felon cannot cost-effectively get rid of it without having shield support. And we do see... Convicts and Thugs. That is exactly what's happening. And Sumo as well. Well, Convict and Thug. After that bandits. But yeah, Sumo is coming up and... 13,500. Okay. That's still... Either way, it's still absurdly large. Either way, the Felon cannot deal with it. That's the important thing. The Felon, trying to deal with it, would commit suicide in the process. Because it would lose its shields. However, with... At least with bandit support, it helps somewhat. But yeah, it needs the shield support. It needs convicts or thugs. It has a convict and a... Actually, it has two thugs. Never mind, not the convict and thug. So, Felthash is going for a very spread army here. Thug fell in to get rid of Pyros. I guess Rogue to get rid of Jax. Bandit to help just in general. But now 10,000 health worth of Jax and 13,000 health worth of Sumo is coming back here. Rymark moving to get rid of this. And we have convict and thug. And this is where the Felon is going to have some issues. But thankfully, it's not without support. Both in terms of shields and in terms of raw damage. And Thugs beginning support with the Bandits as well, so this should work okay. But now the shields are basically down. The Jack, if it's killed before it lands, and it is! I was about to say, if it's killed before it lands, the Felon will survive. Otherwise, the Felon will die, and the Jack was killed before the landing. Could not stick the landing and die in the second Jack. Looks like it's going to try to desperately get over here, and it will not do so in time. Going to jump, and going to die. Almost got it. Got the corpse a little bit out of the way. I think that's reclaimable. Yeah, that looks like that's about... I can't really tell, but that's probably within the constructor range. Actually, can I... If I do that... Yeah, that green circle there. It's barely within the constructor range. They can go on the hill and reclaim it. So yeah, lots of reclaim for Felthos. Felthos can now pretty much go into endgame right now. They have plus 50. They have a crow. That's their endgame tactic or endgame strategy. They want a crow. On the other hand, Rymark does not have an endgame. They've been kind of going for their high end units. I mean, they have the sumo. They have the Fel they have the what was it? the jack. So their endgame is already kind of there. But it's not working out too well. I mean, it's working out okay. The sumo is actually working out all right. It's messing up the shield ball. That's probably the biggest thing it's doing with those gravity beams. The shield ball doesn't have much of a chance to just cleanly kill it. And with the felon out of shields and some of the... I mean, the, the convicts are helping out. The thug's helping out, but it's not much. I mean, the felon's too heavy to really matter. But even then, there's not much you can do other than jump. And it can jump once again. It probably will jump on the felon. 2,000 damage left, and yes, that's exactly what it was going to do, but it missed. Doesn't matter, though, the Felon has gone down, but it doesn't matter still because Felthos managed to build an even larger army in the meantime of rogues and bandits and outlaws, so it can basically counter everything. Rymark does not appear willing to go for a factory switch or for a strider hub. They do have plus 30. They can go for it. Ouch, that bandit was thrown in the water. It'll stay there for a little while. But Rymark throwing in the towel, deciding that this isn't worth it. And that is game. So yeah, that was... That was what happens when you go for your endgame stuff and your opponent has a good counter to it. Jump on shield matchup. That's a tricky one. Okay, so... Rymark pointing out that because the new engine, I guess it changes the way that weight works, or changes the way impulse works, not entirely sure. I think it changes the weight calculation. Might just change the damage. Apparently the sumo becomes less powerful as a result of the new engine. Now, given that the new engine is actually the engine we've been playing on for a while, I think it's the engine the Newton balance change was made on. Or, if not, it was in active testing when the Newton balance change was made, when sumo changed from disruptor beam to Newton. I'm fairly certain that happened while we were testing the 99 release candidates. Because that testing's been going on for months now. I mean, we've been playing on a release candidate for about... I think, I think this is the beginning of the year. I think 2015 has entirely been played on 99RC3. I've gone to RC5, but we haven't moved forward with that. 
But yeah, it's like 98.0.1 dash 475, I think. Or 45. No, 451. 451. That's basically there. Oh, also, Sprung pointed out the bandits actually have a higher range. That's the key difference. They're also faster, and their bullets are faster. That helps a lot, too. So that was that was that. That was a pretty interesting match, showing how Shieldbot can counter jump bots. Options they have. Rogue Bandit. Although Thug Law actually works, or Thug Law Felon can actually work decently well, better than I expected. But I think that was largely because of the Lotuses. As you can see, the Felon was really struggling there. Oh, okay. It's a friction issue. It's friction that's the problem. Apparently, I guess friction has been increased. Because before, Newtons would actually levitate units when they were grabbing them, either grabbing or pushing them. Well, Newtons or gravity beams, in general, would lift units when pushing or pulling. And now the units, they skate along the ground, and as a result, as you notice, the Felon wasn't skating very much. And so it doesn't get lifted into the air. If it's lifted into the air, it ends up flying along, and then smashes in, like, it flies along, smashes into the ground, and as a result, dies. Because it smashes into the ground, which makes the Sumo a very amusing unit to watch. But I guess because the friction has been increased, I'm guessing, it's harder to skate them, they don't levitate, and thus they don't take damage because they're not smashing into things unless they're light units like bandits. Which is understandably annoying. Yeah, the Sumo's a weird unit. It's always been a weird unit. It went from being kind of the overpowered target unit of the Jumpbot Factory to being a bit of a joke unit to now being a literal joke unit because the best thing it does is makes amusing plays. Not sure what to do with that. But then again, I'm not in charge of Jumpbot Factory balance. So that's not my job. Anyway, that being said, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.